Once again, the loading phase takes us from the stance position to the launching position, and it consists of five noticeable movements. And in this video, we are going to talk about the third movement, which is the beginning of the timing step, and identify the muscles involved with this motion. Now, picking up where we left off in the last video, where the spine was rotating backward towards the catcher, immediately after this motion starts, a short timing step with the front leg or leg closest toward the pitcher begins to occur. Let's take a look at this from across home plate. Here we see that as the player's body is being turned backward and away from the pitcher, his left foot or foot closest toward the pitcher has come off the ground signifying the beginning of this timing step. Some players may raise their foot higher than this while others may still keep their toes in contact with the ground. Some will even get to turn their front knee inward or back toward the catcher a little more to facilitate the cocking of the hips, which we will talk about in the next video. And this inward turning of the front leg and knee is usually a technique used by the big league hitters. But as you can see, this is not a part of our batter's technique here. But however high or low the beginning of the timing step is, the first effect of it is to force the back leg the leg closest to the catcher to carry the player's weight. And since his center of gravity remains in relatively the same place during this process, which for the most part is still along the midline of his body, and perhaps more importantly, in front of his back foot, the natural tendency once in this position will be to fall forward, thereby creating valuable momentum in the process during the launching phase. Another effect of the beginning of the timing step is that it also places additional load on the big muscles of the back thigh and buttocks. Now looking from behind home plate, we can see this additional load develop in the back leg taking place as the player's position ends up squatted down a little more when the front foot comes off the ground. The muscles in the back leg that are further loaded during this movement are the hip extensor muscles, which consist of the gluteus maximus, and the hamstrings, which include the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and the long head of the biceps femoris. These muscles can be seen more specifically in this image. Once again, the gluteus maximus, the semimembranosus, the semitendinosus, and the long head of the biceps femoris. The knee extensor muscles are also being loaded in this position, and that includes the quadriceps muscle, which can be seen more specifically in this image. Here are the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and rectus femoris. And the calf muscles are also being loaded in this position, and that includes the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, which can be seen more specifically in this image. Once again, the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. Now, besides creating momentum and loading the powerful muscles of the back leg, another purpose of the timing step is to cock the hips. And in the next video, we will discuss this fourth noticeable movement during the loading phase, and that is the cocking of the hips, and identify the muscles involved with this movement. Thanks for watching the video, and if you would like to, please leave a comment or suggestion regarding this segment of the anatomy of the baseball swing.